Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Quick Med where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be talking about a very high yield US MLE question, how to manage thyroid nodules. I remember when I used to study for this as a medical student, I found this topic very confusing, so hopefully this video will help clarify some things for you. Thyroid nodules are often discovered either by the patient or by the clinician on physical exam or incidentally on imaging. And the primary question that we want to address when we discover these nodules is, are they benign or malignant? They're very common, and the majority of them are benign. About 5% of nodules are malignant only. The risk factors for thyroid cancer include a family history of thyroid cancer, children or adults less than 30 years old, or a history of head and neck radiation therapy. I didn't realize this until I saw a patient just a few weeks ago who had received head and neck radiation therapy in the past. Apparently this was done for some patients who were found to have an enlarged thymus, but nowadays we don't see that as often. All right, so what are some benign causes of thyroid nodules? These include thyroid adenomas, which is an overgrowth of normal thyroid tissue, thyroid cysts, which are fluid-filled structures, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which as you know is a cause of hypothyroidism, but the inflammation in the gland can also lead to thyroid nodule formation, and multinodular goiter. Now when we're talking about cancers, we're talking about primary thyroid cancers, which include your papillary, follicular, medullary, and anaplastic cancers, as well as lymphomas and metastasis from other sites. So what is the initial workup when you find a thyroid nodule? The first two things that you must do and we need to remember this, are to get a TSH and an ultrasound. This is very important. These two need to be done immediately. The reason why we get a TSH is because we want to be able to distinguish between a hot or a functioning nodule versus a cold or a non-functioning nodule. We'll talk a little bit more about this in our algorithm. And the ultrasound is done because it can help us further characterize the lesion. It tells us more about the size and the anatomy of the lesion. And then secondly, it also tells us which nodules should we biopsy. All right, so let's start with the steps that we'll take once we find that the TSH is either normal or elevated in this case. What you'll do next is you will get an ultrasound in order to characterize the lesion, as we said. And some things to look out for include if the lesion is at least one centimeter in size and if it's solid or hypoechoic. So this means that it has solid components if it says that it's hypoechoic on ultrasound. If it has irregular margins, which usually is always indicative of something dangerous, uh, microcalcifications as well, or if it's really just kind of extending anywhere. So extending beyond the thyroid gland into surrounding structures or even through the thyroid nodule itself through the calcifications that are in the nodule. And then if you find abnormal cervical lymph nodes on ultrasound imaging, that's also a higher risk of it being something malignant. And so that's also a red flag to kind of watch out for. So these are really important to remember. You really need to know kind of these red flag symptoms because they will help you determine what to do next on these test questions. So if you find any of these features, if it's yes, you immediately perform a fine needle aspiration, which is basically where we put a needle through the nodule in order to aspirate its content so that we can further analyze it. If not, we observe the nodule. And in terms of how often or um, what the timeline would be for observation, you don't need to concern yourself with those type of things. The US MLE will only ask questions that can be answered easily. They cannot ask you about things that are confusing or that are in the sort of the gray zone, which we often find ourselves in in medicine. All right, so let's now go on to what we do when we have a low TSH. So if we have a low TSH, that indicates that, right, based on a negative feedback, that we have elevated T3, T4 levels in the body. This makes us concerned that maybe this nodule is a hot nodule or that it's producing thyroid hormone, which is causing the TSH to be suppressed. So what we do next is we get a radionuclide thyroid scan. That one's a mouthful. Try to say that five times in a row. So the only time that you will actually get a radionuclide thyroid scan is if the TSH is low. And so let's talk a little bit more about what the radionuclide thyroid scan involves. So it involves injecting a small amount of a radioactive chemical, or radionuclide in this case, into the vein of the patient. And then using imaging, we can sort of see how the thyroid gland takes in this chemical. You'll find either one of two things. You can either see a hot nodule or a cold nodule, which we mentioned before. So with a hot nodule, what you'll see is the rest of the thyroid gland is going to have really limited uptake of the chemical. The chemical appears as black on imaging. 
uh, what you'll see is that there's just this one well circumscribed nodule that's really taking in most of the tracer and so we call that a hot nodule because it's hyper functioning and if it's a cold nodule you'll see that the rest of the thyroid gland is actually taking up a good amount of the tracer except for a particular region uh, that is not taking up that tracer and so it's called a cold nodule all right, so what we do next is if we find that the nodule is non-functioning or it's cold, as we said earlier, we treat it as a non-functioning nodule and it follows the first steps that we discussed where the TSH was normal or elevated. And this is why the boxes that are similar are all shaded in the same color, which is yellow, as compared to the other section that is orange. So then you pretty much proceed to the ultrasound findings. And if you see any of those red flag symptoms that we mentioned before, that determines if you do a biopsy or not. But then if it's a functioning nodule, which uh, we saw earlier as well, what you do is you use the three T4 and T3 that you should measure earlier on in this previous step. And um, you determine if the nodule is overtly hyperthyroid, which would involve having elevated free T4 and T3, or if it's subclinical hyperthyroidism where the free T4 and T3 is normal, but the TSH is low, indicating a hyperthyroid state. And just from looking at this algorithm, you might be wondering why a non-functioning nodule can be found even when the TSH is low. This can be the case if there's another cause of hyperthyroidism. And so in that case, another evaluation needs to take place. This is not something that you're likely to be tested on in the USMLE, but uh, I just wanted to throw that in there so it makes a little bit more sense. And the same thing goes with the TSH being elevated. It's not that the nodule itself is non-functioning and thus causing hypothyroidism. There probably is some other cause of the hypothyroidism that needs to be investigated further. And normally we'll find a TSH that is normal with a cold nodule just because it's less likely that you will have a hypothyroid state. All right, so now that we've gone through those two algorithms, let's go over some practice questions. These questions were actually drawn from the USMLE site. They actually have some practice materials listed on their website, which you can see here. And so I would highly recommend reviewing these before your exams. All right, so for our first question, we have a 47-year-old woman who comes to the office for a routine health ex maintenance examination. She feels well and has no history of serious illness. Exam shows a two centimeter soft, non-tender nodule in the right lobe of the thyroid gland. There is no lymphadenopathy. Her serum TSH concentration is within the reference range. Which one of the following is the most appropriate initial step in management? So before you kind of freak out with these questions, which I usually used to do, the first thing we know here is that the TSH is normal, but there is also something else that we have to draw uh, initially, which is the ultrasound. So the answer here is going to be ultrasound of the thyroid. So this was a pretty straightforward one. All you really needed to know what are what the first two steps are when it comes to managing a thyroid nodule. All right, question number two is a 40 year old man who comes to the office for a pre-employment physical exam. He's been generally healthy. His medical history is unremarkable and he takes no routine meds. His vital signs are also normal. Physical exam shows a palpable nodule in the right lobe of the thyroid gland. His serum TSH concentration is within the reference range, so it's normal. Ultrasound of the thyroid gland confirms a solid one centimeter nodule. So here they're already giving you the size. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in evaluation? So here we have the TSH, which we know is normal, and we have an ultrasound, which already gave us some characteristics of the lesion. So let's go back to our algorithm and see what we do here. So we see that this person has a solid nodule that's at least one centimeter in size. So because he has these findings, we will do a fine needle aspiration. So our answer will be fine needle aspiration of the nodule here. So this is why it's really important to know the different features on ultrasound that you can find because that can help guide you because otherwise if you hadn't known that it was fine needle aspiration, you might be confused and select observation only, which is not the right answer here. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below and please make sure to like and subscribe so that other people can find this video and benefit from it as well. Good luck studying everyone.